Hello and welcome to this Sophistic tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use design elements to get integrated results in an earthquake analysis. I will do this based on this simple example right here. So there is basically one very big difference in the way we create our design elements to our normal workflow. So I will actually jump into one of the design elements I already created right here using Teddy. As you can see in the program decreator, I already created all of the steps that I need for this earthquake analysis. So to create my design element for, for it. By pressing F1, I get the, uh, the manual right here. And as you can see, the usual workflow would be we define the output that we want to get from the design element. We do the general settings of the design element. We define a geometry on which the design element is going to be oriented on. We select the finite elements which should be included and we define cuts along the, define, uh, the design element. But now there is one step missing, which is load case. Actually, the, the manual says that it is a mandatory input for decreator to calculate and store forces. But we can use a trick right here. So we don't have to use one decreator calculation or program to define uh, the design element itself and the load cases. We can separate them in two decreator runs. And this is the workflow we are going to use for the seismic analysis. So we will define the design elements before we even have load cases in the system. Then we're going to do a linear analysis, earthquake analysis. And in the earthquake analysis, if we take a look at the options right here in results, you can see that we can define a result type for beam and design elements. So those are the results that uh, will be calculated for every single design element or the load cases that will be calculated for the design element. So let's take a look at the design elements that I created right here. I have a design element number one, which uses the cro primary cross section number two, which is this cross section over here. As you can see, this has uh, the dimensioning of a wall. This is because I will analyze these, this wall, this wall, and those two walls in the middle. And I will show you the different options of uh, placing the design element along it on based on this example, because right now the design element is referenced to the geometric center of the sectional cuts. What does this mean? I will actually show that once we calculate the design elements themselves. We are, I also gave it a title. I'll call it shear wall and I defined uh, intermediate sections along the design element for every 15 centimeters. With the geo, I already mentioned, I define a geometry for this, uh, for the design element. I did this based on structural lines. I can of course also use beam elements, straight lines and an axis. For the straight lines, I would have to define X, Y, Z, of course. And for the axis, I can also use these options done here. So as you can see, I selected multiple structural lines, 40, 41, 42. When I switch to Sophie Plus, you can see that the, there are thicker and thinner structural lines defined right here. I will use the filter to simply turn off my uh, columns and walls right here. And now only my structural lines that I defined as design element are left. So as you can see right here, this is number 42, for example, and this is number 40. So 40. 41, 42 is my design element number one. The next step is to select the finite elements that should be included in my calculation. Right now, as I defined a cross, uh, cross section with NCS, I have the option of using section, so sec. So it uses the bounding box of my cross section, which means it will place the design element in the center of gravity and it will take the top left corner, the top right corner, bottom and left corner and will select all finite elements that are within this bounding box. 
There are multiple options to do that. As you can see right here, I used box. So I can actually define a box with uh, Y and Z variables. And I can also, in this case, select quad elements. So as you can see right here, I used number four, three, four, eight, nine, 13, 14. If I jump back into my Sophie Plus right here, I can show you. So this is number three, four, nine, eight, 14, and 13. So I selected those middle walls all together. What this allows me to do is to also use the center of gravity of these selected finite elements. I do this using F ref. So the gra center of gravity is automatically calculated by the design element program decreator. So let's actually calculate up to this point and take a look what this means. So let's jump into the report of my design element number one. And I click on graphics. You can see those are the finite elements that are selected. We can actually take a look at the intersections right here. So those are placed every 15 centimeters. And right here, we also have a description for what we are seeing. So we see that, let's actually jump over here. We see that the design element reference point, the geometric reference and the sectional centroid are in the same point where the design element is placed as well. Let's take a look what this looks like with the two walls that are in a 90 degrees angle to each other. So let's jump over here and we can see, ah, uh, I actually placed the design element in the middle of one of these walls. The design element position that is calculated by the center of gravity by FREF is right here. So the design element itself is placed here. The reference of the design element is right here. Okay, so the last option that I left out right now is the design sections along the design element. So right here, I have the option of adding additional cuts along the design element. And I did this right here with a distance from the start of the line from a multitude of foreign increments actually right here. So let's see what's happening when we actually do our linear analysis and jump into the earthquake analysis. So right now the design elements are created, which allows me to do the earthquake analysis. As you can see, I already put in a lot of information right here. And I selected the result types that include the results that I want to analyze for my design elements. So right now the uh, eigenvalues are calculated and the results for my design elements are already integrated in this work step. So afterwards, I actually only have to superpose this, these results, these load cases. As you can see, I have in my combination results for design elements automatically implemented. And by calculating this, I already get the results that I want to take a look in my post-processing later on. So again, let's jump into the animator right here and take a look at the eigenvalues. As you can see, all the calculations are done. And let's take a look at the graphs that are calculated right here. As you can see, I chose uh, the design elements. Right here, you can see that the center of gravity of the middle walls is actually right here. And the center of gravity for the other shear walls is in the center of gravity of the walls. So I have nominal force, shear forces, bending moment, and all these results are created and integrated by the decreator tool. And again, the important part is to split up 
the creation of the design element and the load case calculation and integration of the results. Thank you for watching and see you soon in another Sophistic tutorial. Goodbye!